today, Intel's flagship GPU is finally revealed. DDR5 gives a big performance jump in this. Intel's monster CPUs have finally been leaked, and 13th gen CPUs are set to heat your home. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, while Intel's desktop Arc GPUs have been delayed time and time again, it looks like the company is finally gearing up for a release, as Intel has revealed the prizes for their scavenger hunt that they had a little while back. Specifically, the grand prize winners will get their A770 card, while the first prize winners get an A750. What's interesting is that Intel also confirmed a couple of the specs. That is that the A750 comes with 8GB of memory and the A770 comes with 16GB. Of course, if you've been following this channel, you've seen this leaked quite a long time ago, but this makes it official. Not only that, but Intel confirmed that they're going to begin sampling very soon, meaning a full release of their highest end cards is finally on the way. Time will tell if they have something that can truly compete. Next, while I'm sure many of you have heard how amazing AI is, that it's the future of computers, etc. Well, did you know that an early computer built in the 1960s could learn, and it was made out of matchboxes? Basically, a matchbox was used for each scenario of a tic-tac-toe game. A colored bead was then picked at random and correlated to a space to play. When the computer lost, the beads used in the game were thrown away. When it won, two more beads of that color were added, and one bead was added if it was a draw. So over time, the computer got better at playing tic-tac-toe. How cool is that? Well, you can learn about that, along with how more modern neural networks work in Brilliant's Introduction to Neural Networks class. And they've sponsored today's video to let you know that you can try it for free when you visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. And there's a ton of other courses just like it. Plus, the first 200 of you who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. Next up for today, it looks like DDR5 memory is actually set to give a real performance boost, specifically in Intel's 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs. For those who don't know, Intel's 12th gen CPUs support both DDR4 and DDR5 memory, but DDR5 really doesn't seem to offer a marked improvement over DDR4 in many workloads, making the more expensive memory, though it is going down, definitely not worth a price increase for many. Well, over the past few days, new benchmarks have surfaced for both the 13700K and 13600K that were using DDR5, and luckily there are very similar benchmarks for both CPUs that use DDR4, so we can compare the performance in each benchmark, and if there's a difference, it's almost certainly because of DDR5. And get this, when compared to multi-core scores, the 13700K with DDR5 gets an incredible performance uplift of 20%, and the 13600K gets a performance boost of 11%, meaning the upgrade to DDR5 may finally be worth the price, at least for Intel users. Of course, how that'll translate into real-world performance is tough to say. Remember that Geekbench is just a synthetic benchmark, so we'll have to wait until we can get benchmarks in actual applications. But so far, things are looking good. Next up, while sticking to Intel, the company's entire next generation of monster CPUs have finally been leaked. In a new post by Video Cards, they were apparently given a list of Intel's upcoming Sapphire Rapid CPUs, specifically their Sapphire Rapids Workstation CPUs. So these aren't made for servers or anything like that. They're actually set to go against AMD's Threadripper lineup and a successor to their aging Ice Lake X and Cascade Lake X parts. Starting things off, as we go through these, you'll notice that none seem to have efficiency cores, given they all have multi-threading on all the cores. We also don't have any information on memory channels or or PCI Express support, though rumors point to 8 channel support and 112 PCI Express lanes. When it comes to the actual specs, Sapphire Rapid starts at 12 cores and 24 threads, with one being a lower clock part and one being higher. Then they move up to 16 cores and 32 threads, 20 cores and 40 threads, then 24 cores and 48 threads, 28 cores and 56 threads, 36 cores and 72 threads, all the way up to the biggest 56 core and 112 thread monster CPU. Of course, you'll notice that it only has what I assume is a base clock of 1.9 GHz, which is definitely lower than the 2.7 GHz base clock on AMD's newest 64-core Threadripper. It also comes with a cache of 105 MB. Finally, it comes with a TDP of 350 watts, which is quite a bit higher than AMD's Threadripper. Still, Sapphire Rapids is set to be a very interesting release, as Intel is finally getting back to the high-end CPU market. 
Finally for today, it looks like Intel's 13th gen CPUs are going to have some serious power draw. In a new tweet, a user apparently found documentation for a top-down analysis of Intel's 13th gen architecture, at least according to WCCF Tech. The interesting part about this is that according to the document, Intel's next-gen Raptor Lake CPUs essentially have the same architecture as 12th gen Alder Lake with a few small changes. Of course, we already know that Raptor Lake was built on the same Intel 7 process as Alder Lake, but there was still hope that significant architectural changes had happened. Think from Zen 2 to Zen 3. Now, it looks like that really isn't going to happen. Instead, Intel looks to get most of their performance out of adding more efficiency cores, that and potentially upping the clocks a bit. The problem is that if this is right, it means there won't be an actual IPC increase. So all of that performance comes at the cost of power draw. Sure, Intel is only adding little cores or efficiency cores, but they aren't exactly efficient when using them at their max. Case in point, Alder Lake already has some very high power draw and heat. In fact, it's already not as efficient as Ryzen. Adding a bunch of cores and upping the clocks will only add to that. Ryzen 7000, on the other hand, is expected to get an IPC jump thanks to AMD's move down to 5 nanometers. Really, the big difference I think will be in whether AMD can drop their price to match or beat Intel. 13th gen is likely going to take the performance crown. Of course, in doing so, the company may be providing some very expensive space heaters. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Intel's next-gen CPUs, or are you more excited for their enthusiast parts? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermel. And as always, have a great day!